Good morning, everyone. Thank you all so much for being here. And as Vivica and Peter have mentioned a couple of times, I am officially employed by the U.S. National Park Service, and when I registered for this conference last year, that is the affiliation that I use. But I need to give a disclaimer this morning uh, due to intervening events. I am here in my personal capacity and I'm under the flag of a professional service uh, with ECOMOS. With that, I will jump in and get started and just state that peer review is utterly thankless and absolutely essential. To do it well, you have to get inside the mind of an author. You have to understand what they're trying to say, figure out if they've said it, whether it's justified, by the evidence they've given, and suggest ways to make their work better. In sum, peer review asks us to be uber authors without getting all of the author credit. At the same time, peer review is essential to how the scientific world works, including our own. It's how we grow confidence in the work that is published and share experiences and perspectives. At best, it's scientific collaboration writ large. It's a community of scholars saying, if you review for me, I'll review for you. Today, what I'm gonna do is share some experience I've had with peer review as the core of sharing with you some analyses and recommendations about the connections between archeology span and the world of climate change science and response. And the focus of my review are the reports of the IPCC. Now, IPCC stands for Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change. It was founded in 1988 by the World Meteorological Organization and the UN Environment Program with the goal of providing policymakers with regular assessments of the scientific basis for climate change and assessments of adaptation and mitigation strategies. The IPCC consists of a secretariat that coordinates a rotating roster of hundreds of scientists from around the world that produce periodic large assessment reports and more episodic special reports on individual topics. Now the assessment reports are actually a set of three reports that are produced respectively by three working groups. Working group one produces a report on climate science, working group two produces a report on impacts and adaptation, and working group three is mitigation. And occasionally they produce a synthesis report as well. The assessment reports have come out very regularly, the first one in 1990, second in 95, third in 2001, the AR4, uh, fourth assessment report in 2007, the most recent one that's available appeared fully in 2014, AR5, and the sixth assessment report is now in preparation, scheduled for release in 2021. Special reports have included things like guarding, safeguarding the ozone layer, carbon capture and storage, renewable energy, and managing the consequences of extreme events and disasters. There are now three special reports also currently in preparation. These include limiting warming to 1.5 degrees C, oceans and cryosphere, and land use. I'm going to step out for a moment on a very big scale and recognize that the IPCC has recognized from its very founding that modern climate change is the result of human activity. This human activity is the use of fossil fuels and changes in land use on an extensive scale linked to the start of the Industrial Revolution, which is generally recognized to have started at about in the 1750s. Some recent climate modeling has estimated that departures of our climate from natural variability began to depart uh, from that natural variability in its earliest 1830s. Therefore, both historical and post-medieval archaeology have so much to say in documenting and tracking the development of this socially and environmentally. In turn, archaeology of earlier time periods has so much to say about the social and environmental baselines from which we have departed, alternate ways of living and thinking, patterns of human memories, and ways of identifying and responding to acute disasters and environmental change. And together, all types of archaeology can connect people to place, anchor our senses of identity and community, which are really important components of viable adaptation and sustainable approaches to reducing the carbon intensity of our modern lifeways. Given all of this, archaeology and heritage should have a clear role and an identifiable presence in the reports of the IPCC, right? No, they do not. There is some. In a recent analysis, which I'll describe more in a moment, 
The fifth assessment report, the most recent one, has a total of 173 mentions of cultural heritage and related terms. 166 of these reference living indigenous cultures and the, con the concept of culture broadly. Seven mentions reference archaeology and prehistory. Now, absolutely, the attention to indigenous peoples and, and living cultures must be there, and it should and could likely be much larger. But the problem that I really want to call out is the low attention to archaeology. Now, in recent years, there have been a number of studies that have talked about the impacts of climate change on archaeology. And I will just briefly mention a recent review of impacts in the Arctic, uh, led by Sheldon Collison, uh, work in the US looking at archaeological sites across the southeast, uh, led by David Anderson, the work of our wonderful colleagues at SCAPE. The Society for American Archaeology has been putting forward the concept of burning libraries as the need to develop an archive um, for, uh, from all of the sites that are at risk. And of course, there are many efforts going on across various nations to address these issues. And I will note, there is work at the National Park Service, uh, Historic Environment Scotland, Historic England, and Cherish, just to name a few who I know are in the room today. But my proposal is that given the range of exposures that are affecting archaeology, the kind of response that is needed to meet the, both the projected loss of archaeology and to realize the potential of archaeology to assist with climate change response, it's not going to happen unless we are well represented in the reports that are most respected and most used by governments around the world. We may not be heard even then, but being a well-integrated part of the IPCC, I say, must be part of our best shot. So where are we and what should we do? First, a little bit more about the IPCC. The IPCC is not a synthesis organization. Their goal is to assess the peer-reviewed literature that already exists, which means that there are several strands of data that have been published, but there isn't a publication that brings those threads together and connects them to modern climate change issues, the IPCC is not going to do that work. Also, the IPCC preferences selection of authors who have previous experience working with the IPCC, and it also works to use a global distribution of authors, each of which are nominated by their home countries. What this means for archaeology is that biases and gaps in previous author distributions are likely to be translated forward into future reports as those authors are preferentially selected again. And while the global distribution is absolutely essential and they should be commended for all the efforts they put into doing that, when combined with that preference for previous authors, there may be some suppression of diversity in the disciplines that are represented. So given this, our first line of action has to be to understand what the IPCC has recognized as relevant heritage topics and relevant heritage literature. We need to know where the gaps are big and where they are small. And in figuring this out, I am deeply indebted to the Heritage Futures Program at the University College of London and Hannah Morell, who works there, who did a deep dive into both the AR4 and the AR5 in search of heritage. She used this series of search terms and then analyzed them and organized them into a series of topics. She even pulled out every single section that mentions any one of those heritage terms. This is how I got to those numbers that I showed you previously. There are so many ways to understand this. Both of us are still working through it. What it does show is that the broad scope of heritage, living indigenous cultures have a substantially greater representation than information from and about the past. So again, this is where we need to work. Our next line of action is to get more archaeologists involved in the process of creating IPCC reports. This is episodic. We can only do this when they're scoping or writing a report. Now, over the last year and a half or so, through the Society for American Archaeology, I have helped to foster several nominations. We yielded a total of 20 nominations for the AR6 and the three special reports. And we had one success. Archaeologist Tim Kohler was nominated, uh, accepted to help scope the AR6, and he actually gave a presentation on archaeology to their scoping meeting in Addis Ababa in May of 2017. I've reviewed the outline of the AR6, and I have not seen any specific pieces uh, from Tim, but the, there may be some um, 
components uh, that will go forward. But to realize the work that Tim hopefully has started, I need to finally get to my core example, which is peer review. Now, over the last year, I have peer reviewed the special report on limiting warming to 1.5 and the land use report and the US National Climate Assessment. None of them have been completed, but the 1.5 report has gone through both the first and second order draft, which means I've been able to look at the second order draft and see which of my comments were taken up. So that's what I'm going to share with you right now. In sum, I submitted a total of 19 comments. Two of these were taken up. The IPCC requests that their draft reports not be cited, quoted, or distributed, so what I can share with you is what I said. Most of my comments are long. They look like this, basically saying there's something wrong, and I recommend references to fill it. Some of them are short, just saying, hey, there's a problem, please fill it. Neither of these two particular examples were taken up. The two uh, comments of mine that were taken up were of that longer variety, saying there's something wrong, please use this reference, this reference, or possibly this reference. Now, on the front end, these look quite similar. So I did a deep dive to say, what might be different between the particular references that weren't taken up in the first example I showed you, and these? And what I found was, one of them concluded with a statement, which may sound uh, very similar to us, that said, historical studies can help us to understand current society. It had meant it all. They ended with the idea that transformation may be illuminating. But the two that were taken up, including some surviving sudden environmental change, included a full statement on the relevance of archaeology for policymakers and the World Heritage and Tourism volume, which I know Catherine and the friend Samuels mentioned, includes direct specific case studies on the impacts of climate change on heritage and the effects on tourism. So my first recommendation is how the field of archaeology should go forward, is that we need more publications that explicitly detail impacts and that explicitly connect insights from the past to modern climate policy issues. But publishing alone is not going to get us there. There are still all of the other current IPCC biases that select away from heritage that we need to contend with. Fortunately, we currently have a chance at something bigger. ICOMOS, which is the International Council of Monuments and Sites, over the last year has launched a new climate change and heritage working group. Discussions of this group with the World Heritage Committee has led to a formal request from the World Heritage Committee to ECOMOS to work with the IPCC to create an expert meeting on cultural heritage and climate change, hopefully leading to our own special report on cultural heritage and climate change, or possibly a chapter in the AR7. The ECOMOS working group has therefore, therefore stood up two working groups. The first is trying to align the entire heritage world with the goals of the Paris Agreement, and the other one is to oversee this work with the IPCC. This IPCC team is led by me, and so now here I am talking with you. Now, our work plan for the IPCC team is based on all that I have just shared with you, and it includes continuing to review IPCC reports and nominate authors wherever possible, preparing for the special meeting, which includes figuring out what are our key issues for and from heritage for climate change, and what do we most want to see addressed in a special report or chapter, and then also reviewing what is the state of literature that we need to get us there. And finally, we need to continue fostering new publications to connect our fill gaps in the literature between past and present. This is all now taking place in part of an even larger context, Next week, as part of the Global Climate Action Summit, which will be happening in San Francisco, there will be the launch of a new climate heritage network. This is an effort to mobilize the heritage and related fields broadly for climate change with the goal of greater visibility about the needs of heritage and exercising our ability to help. Final part, how you can help. The AA is considering a request to join the Climate Heritage Network so let us know, we can discuss this further. The EAA has a climate change community. We will be launching this further in Bend, as Peter mentioned at the start of our session. If you're interested and able to support the work of the ECOMOS IPCC team, please let me know. 
I'm pleased in all of the future work that you do. Know that climate response needs specific kinds of literature in a short time frame. These include clear documentation of the climate impacts on archaeology and heritage, documentation of the benefits of archaeology and heritage for adaptation. Where has it already been useful? And direct and specific application of archaeological findings to major climate change issues. If we can do all of these things, there will be a foundation on which we can build for a very long time. And you can see I'm already dreaming of the cover art for our special report. With that, I will say thank you.